Hey ladies, welcome back to my channel, Parenting with Purpose. I'm Christian, and today I want to talk to you about oppression. So last week we talked about being aware of um, different spirits that try to attach themselves to you uh, when you're in relationships, whether it be in romantic relationships, uh, relationships within the church, family, friends, whatever the case may be. And so we uh, specifically talked about control, manipulation, and oppression. And so last week was just the beginning of just bringing this awareness to you. Um, but this week, I want to talk to you about oppression and just kind of taking our time to break it down. So last week, I gave you the definition of oppression. And oppression is when uh, you have someone that's in a position of power or authority that abuses that position um, to hinder you from reaching your full potential. So I actually like Dr. Tony Evans' definition of oppression, and it says, he defines it as imposed domination of another person or another group of people in order to control them mentally, physically, emotionally, and worst of all, spiritually in order to stifle their aspirations and limit their potential. To be oppressed is to be dominated or held down or suppressed in such a way as to control or cancel or to limit your divinely ordained potential. All right, so some of the words when it comes to oppression, because a lot of people may not use the word, the exact word oppression, but they might use the word when you're being oppressed, when you're the one that's being influenced by the oppressor, right? You might hear someone describe it as I'm being smothered or I feel overwhelmed or tormented. I feel overpowered, right? Uh, I feel burdened. But some of the sim synonyms for the person that is doing the oppressing, so the oppressor, you might hear words of uh, very dominating or forceful or controlling. Those are just synonyms that you'll hear because, again, not everybody, everyone will say the word oppression. And so that's what we're talking about today, oppression. I just want to break it down. So control and manipulation are actually related, like they're cousins, basically. <laughs> you might as well say they're cousins because a person that is operating in the spirit of control, right? So when a person wants control, they want something so bad and they realize that they're not getting their way, they will invite manipulation. They'll invite manipulation and manipulation to come in and almost like a, a reinforcement, they'll start using deceitful tactics to be able to basically get you to a place where you fall prey, like you fall victim to now being under their control. So it goes hand in hand. So controlling, you know, a person that's in, that's use or uh, that's a person that is um, operating in a spirit of control. If they can't get their way by trying to control it themselves, um, they would then use deceitful tactics, which is manipulation, um, to then have a person fall prey to being controlled by them. Like some people just don't know that they're being controlled, right? Um, but the same goes for people that are controlling that are operating in that spirit of control and manipulation, there are different levels of oppression. So there is such thing as political, um, political oppression, there is mental oppression, there is uh, spiritual oppression. There are so many different levels of oppression. But today I wanna talk to you about um, spiritual oppression. Now, I do wanna give you some examples. Um, and you can find it in the Bible, but in the book of Genesis, <clears throat> in the book of Genesis, you have uh, where Laban and Jacob, Jacob was so, he, he loved Rachel, right? And so he wanted Rachel as his wife. Well, when he went to Rachel's father, Laban, um, Ra uh, Laban said that he had to work seven years for her. 
So Jacob worked seven years for Laban. And when the seventh year came up, Laban gave Jacob Leah. And that's not who Jacob wanted. And so when Jacob came back to Laban, Laban said, okay, well, you'll have to work another seven years. And so he gave him this forced labor to work another seven years for the actual woman that Jacob wanted, which was Rachel. So, and he did it because he really loved Rachel. So that's an example of oppression. All right. Then you have in the book of Exodus, um, in the book of Exodus, where you have, uh, this was after Joseph and his brothers and all the people from that generation had passed away. Like they had died off. So now there's a new king uh, in the palace and you have all the Israelites that are still there, right? It's a new generation of Israelites, but they're now there under a different king. And so Pharaoh, he's upset. He's like, hey, it's too many Israelites out here. Like they're numerous and they're more powerful than we are. And he's talking about them as Egyptians, right? And so the more um, that Pharaoh oppressed the more that he him and his taskmasters uh oppressed the israelites they grew like they multiplied in number <laughs> all right and so pharaoh didn't like that but the fact that he was uh oppressing god's people and the bible talks about that god heard their cry all right so that's another example of oppression in the bible but then i want to introduce something to you because the more i started you know, just asking questions and um, really doing some more, like digging uh, into research. In the book of Job, it talks about the Leviathan spirit, which is controlling, right? Um, the Leviathan spirit is, is very interesting, but it's God who actually talks about the Leviathan spirit and he in chapter 41, Job chapter 41, he talks about the Leviathan spirit. So Leviathan, the Leviathan spirit and uh, demonic oppression, it is, it goes together. All right. It's actually a, um, it's actually a, a form of deception. And so the Leviathan spirit, um, it, I was, I'll give you some characteristics. So a person that's operating in the Leviathan spirit, they can be very territorial, um, meaning they can come off as being, they can come off as being an angel of light. So they can come off as being very loving. They can come off as um, being very, very, it can be very loving, but it can also be uh, like very protective, you know, um, at the end of the day, they do not want others to have access to you because they are very territorial. Um, they are, uh, they have predatory behavior. So predatory behavior, um, when I say that is more of aggressive behavior, um, more of manipulative, manipulative behavior. Uh, again, if they're not getting their way, then you will see an aggressive side come out. It can also be divisive. Um, and so you have to be careful because uh, this type of spirit is, it brings division in the church. When I say the church, I'm not talking about the, not the building, but we as the body of Christ, we as the church. Now, in Isaiah chapter 27, verse 1, um, the Leviathan spirit is also described as a twisting serpent and also a fleeing serpent. Now, with this, it was interesting because this is, and I, I mentioned it earlier, but a twisting, the twisting serpent, it twists, um, it twists words to work for their agenda. So you might have someone who is operating in, in the Leviathan spirit um, who will use scripture to back up their own agenda. Um, they may use scripture to manipulate someone. And so this is why it's very important to know the Bible, like to read 
your word um, for yourself so that you can know the context of scripture um, and to also cultivate your own relationship with God because the anybody that's working or that's that's anyone that is operating in the Leviathan spirit can come off as being the voice of God if you're not careful. Like you'll hear some people say, um, I heard God say, or um, I just felt in my spirit. And let me just say this, there is absolutely nothing wrong with saying that, but when someone tells you that you have to do your research, you have to go to God, and you can also look in scripture. At the end of the day, the Bible is the standard. So whenever there's a question, you can always go to the Bible. There's not one question on this earth that anyone has ever asked or will ask that the Bible cannot and won't answer. So do your own due diligence to look up what the word of God says when someone says, oh, I felt in my spirit or um, God told me to tell you and it has something to do with, you know, like giving you directions or instructions, um, you know, for you to take in life. You definitely want to take that to God and you definitely want to see what the word of God says about that. Russian, it really is all about breaking a person's spirit because it wants control. So if, if I was working in, if I was, you know, operating in, um, in the spirit of oppression, I will want to gain control of you. And if I feel like I can't do it on my own, then I'm going to start you know, twisting scripture or, um, you know, just creating deceitful tactics to be able to manipulate you to ultimately come under the umbrella of me controlling you, right? That's really what oppression is all about. And then, of course, the spirit of Leviathan or the Leviathan spirit um, is, you know, it, it goes hand in hand with, um, with oppression. It is associated with demonic oppression. And so that's why God brings it up because it's very, it's very dangerous um, to be around this type of, this type of spirit. And something that I do want to add to that is, um, we have, our responsibility is to remain in the security of God, right? Um, God says there should be no other God except me, right? So we, when it comes to oppression, it is very, it's a thin line. I believe it's a thin line to uh, idolatry because willing or unwillingly, you begin to worship someone else because now you have someone else that's controlling you and manipulating you when, and, and if we're thinking about it, if we're being honest, God gives us free will. So if God doesn't control us, like if God doesn't, if God doesn't make us, do his will like he knows what's best for us but even he says that he gives us free will so there should be no one that is controlling or manipulating us right and so for a person who is operating in that spirit of oppression um they will like to get you isolated they will like to bring you out from under the security of god they will like to get you out of covenant with god because you can't serve two gods you can't serve two God. So that, that person that's operating in oppression, and again, oppression is associated with the Leviathan spirit. It's more spirits than just the Leviathan spirit, but that's what we're covering in this video. I'll, next week, I'll go into the other ones. But as they're operating in these spirits, it can, it can take you away from under or from being under the security of God, right? Which now you're op, you're 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 idolizing um, the person that's controlling you. All right, so with all this information, and honestly, I feel like I haven't even uh, begun to scratch the surface of it, so, but how do I get to a place of defeating um, <clears throat> the Leviathan spirit? Like, how do we get back on track with our lives? Because at some point, um, when you're being influenced by, 
uh, a person who is operating in that spirit, um, things kind of freeze up in the spirit realm for you. So you'll know when something is off track. You'll know when you're um, when something is wrong, right? So how do we get to a place of getting our lives back on track? Number one, by the blood of Jesus, we can already fight from a place of victory. We're not fighting from a place of victims, being victims, but we are fighting from a place of victory. Thank you, Lord. All right. But our, um, I guess that would be like our, just an acknowledgement, but our first step is repent. Simply repent. God, I am sorry. We were predestined to fall. You know, when God created you before he knew you, I mean, before he put you in your mother's womb, he knew you, right? And he still called you. So he knew that we would make mistakes. Again, sometimes we don't even know when we're being influenced by uh, these spirits, right? We don't, we don't know sometimes. Um, and even if you did know and you maybe just didn't speak up, you still repent. Like God is so gracious. He's so forgiving, you know, and so repent and talk to God. God, I'm sorry. This is what I did. And then also turn from repeating those same habits. Do not go back into um, the territory of what got you here in the first place. Okay. So Turn from your evil ways. Like, that's what God says. Like, pr you know, come to me, pray, and seek my face. Um, and watch him forgive you. Watch him, you know, um, get you back on track. Because there are some things that, that does tend to freeze up in the spirit realm, and it will affect you in, uh, in the natural. All right? So the second step is to get into your word. Get into your word. It is in the word of God. It is God's word. It is his love letter to us. Get into the Bible. Get into a habit of reading God's word. And um, because God actually calls us to freedom. He calls us to a life of freedom. Um, there's a scripture and he says in Luke 4, in Luke chapter 4, um, verse 18. And he talks about, he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, um, because he has anointed me to go and preach the good news. Um, he even says, let me see here. He says to preach the good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind and to set the oppressed free. That's what he says. And so um, we have to be intentional about spending time with God. I recently did a video on the three things um, to do when relearning to hear God's voice again. But you repent. You repent, turn from your evil, uh, turn from our evil ways, meaning don't go back into, you know, the same habits that influenced us uh, of being controlled and manipulated and being oppressed. All right. And then get into your word. God is for us. He's not against us. He's so gracious to give us, you know, chance after chance after chance. So as we get into the word, let me say this. When we are under the influence of a person who is operating in uh, the Leviathan spirit, right, um, like a controlling spirit, we can no longer hear God. Like he talks, but we can no longer hear him. So as we get it, you know, as we ask God for forgiveness, we, we repent. And then as we are in his word, God is, we're going to begin to hear God's voice, but you have to be intentional about spending time with him, um, listening for him. And as he gives you strategy moves, be careful to obey him. And over time you will see speed in things because God is beginning to restore to you and put you back on track where you dropped the ball. God is so good, y'all. Like, I'm telling you from experience, God will begin to restore to you. He will begin to put you back, you know, like kind of like a reset, put you back to where you were before, like before you dropped the ball um, so that you can get back on track and you can continue on with his will for your life. Um, but you have to be intentional about 
uh, spending time with God, getting into his word, and then do your own research. Continue to pray. Continue to pray because um, he does say that my people perish for a lack of knowledge. And so you don't want to create this habit of or this cycle of being oppressed. You want to be able to you want to be able to see that spirit from a mile away and say, nope, we're not doing this again. All right. So uh, that's all I have for you. I think I'm going to go and I think I'm going to um, just stay on the Leviathan spirit just a little bit longer because um, I don't it's so much information, but I don't feel like I was able to even give you half of it in this one video. And I'm trying to keep it short, um, but I do want to give you the, the information, give you that knowledge um, so that you can make wise choices. And again, bring it back to God in prayer. All right. So that's all I have for you. I hope and pray to God that this has um, furthered your knowledge about control, manipulation, and uh, oppression. And uh, I pray that this helps you, whether you have been here before or are currently going through something like this. If you know someone who uh, this video would help, go ahead and share it with him. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Enjoy your weekend.